Hello, welcome to Damn Right. I'm your host, Chris Lisinek. Today, we're gonna try something a little different. We're gonna do a short episode that's about 10 minutes instead of 60 to 90, and I'd love to know how you feel about it. Let me know at damnright at weareavp.com. Today's episode is an interview with Kara Van Molson, who you know if you're a listener of the show. If not, I'll say quickly that Kara is a partner and managing director at AVP, a thought leader in the Damosphere, and an all around wonderful person. The interviewer is former AVP senior consultant, Carrie Willette. Since doing this interview, Carrie has moved on and is now doing awesome work, no doubt, at Dropbox. Carrie is a super talent and pure delight of a human being. Since we're keeping this short, I'll just quickly say that I really love how Kara makes the analogy between dam implementation and moving into a new home. She grounds the topic of dam implementation, making it both fun and relatable. I know you'll enjoy it. Speaking of which, please go like, follow, or subscribe on your platform of choice. And remember, damn right, because it's too important to get wrong. We're here today, we're going to talk about uh, some things that were inspired by the article that you wrote for Henry Stewart's publication, The Journal of Digital Media Management, I think it was volume seven. That article subsequently evolved into a, a blog post that I know you wrote after relocating. And the blog post is called Manage Your Dam Expectations or How Getting a Dams is Like Buying and Owning a Home. All right, so uh, tip one, there's usually a good reason for doing it. Yeah, so we had an opportunity in another city. My husband got a job offer. So within um, five months, we had sold a house, moved, bought a house, and moved again. So it was quite a lot. So uh, what are some of the good reasons that you've heard from organizations who are looking to move to or switch or get a new dam system for the first time? Yeah, so it, it usually falls into a few different buckets. Like a lot of times it's it's around pain points that they're having. So it might be things like, you know, staff trying to find images or videos and they're rummaging through Dropbox and Google Drive and email and hard drives and right. you know, where trying to find what they're looking for and it takes forever and they don't find it. Um, and so centralizing the assets is, is a one good reason. Um, another one we see a lot is maybe misuse of assets where you've got um, people putting um, images on social media that they might shouldn't be using or on the website that they don't have permission to use for that purpose. And so um, trying to kind of get some control around the usage of the assets is another reason we see a lot. Um, and then another reason might just be to kind of open up a, like a new treasure trove of assets that um, was previously sort of hidden. Like maybe you digitized a whole bunch of stuff and you want to make that available. So. That's another good reason. So the next tip in your post, you have to decide what you will need. How do you feel like organizations can answer the question of what they need in a dam system? You've got to figure out what those three to five or four to six like key differentiator things are, or the, the real deal breakers. Mm -hmm. um, and one of those is always going to be the budget, but the other things are unique to you. Um, maybe it's technical things like, you need to host this on-premise or you need to host it in your own a Amazon Web Services account, or maybe you want the vendor to host it for you. Um, so those those might be some of those considerations, or maybe there are things like format requirements, like you want specific support for InDesign files, for instance. Right. Or maybe it's functional things, like um, you really need full text search of documents, like that's critical. So you don't want to look at systems that don't have that. It's it's like, that's one of your, your deal breakers, things like that. So you've got to kind of figure out what are those top fives um, that you really need to have in the dam. And you can use that to sort of narrow down the candidate solutions. And then when you start to evaluate those, you can really look for the kind of nuanced differences between them and how they actually help you achieve the goals that you have in mind. Yeah, that makes sense. So tip three in your blog post uh, talks about making a plan and clearly scoping um, what you call a minimum viable product or MVP version of what you need. Um, and you would do that before implementing a dams. Um, we all know that moving requires a lot of planning, but what are some areas you've seen organizations that you've worked with most often not plan well for implementing a dam? 
there's a big difference here between a moving a house and moving into a dam. You kind of know what's involved in the moving house situation. You know, it's going to be like a lot of packing and organizing and then unpacking and organizing. Um, but with a dam, a lot of people haven't really done this before. So it's a little murky, like what are the things you need to do? So what we see is, a, I think, three things that people where they, they might go wrong here. So one is they're not allocating enough resources internally to the implementation and the migration. Um, and, you know, it's probably going to be like one person's full-time job for a while. So um, just, just something to keep in mind. Um, another is just not really planning around major migrations. If you've got a lot of data to move from one system to another or from maybe 10 systems or 10 different data stores to another, it's just, that's a lot of work. It takes time and, and, and planning. And then the last one is kind of getting overly ambitious, maybe not realizing that you're doing it, but, um, you know, trying to kind of do everything before you go live. And, and maybe that's including like custom integrations, maybe custom development on top of the kind of out of the box features of the system. It's like, if you got a contractor and you know you decided to gut renovate the house before you moved in you better expect that's going to take you some time so you're not getting in that house really anytime soon but this is an organization there's politics there's budget there's like you know expectations and if the thing drags on for too long before it gets launched um that can really damage um the reputation of this program it can kind of lose political will so it's important to kind of scope something that's realistic to just get it off the ground and get those core features working really well. So things like just making the search work, the browse work, the making sure the assets are well organized, making sure they're well described and tagged, um, that people can you know easily access them when they should and they can't access them when they shouldn't. So roll out those key features, get it in the hands of people who are going to give you really good feedback and then going to start with it. And then you can get those additional things over time. Great. Tip four, maintenance, enhancement, and repairs come with the territory. So Kara, I happen to know that you recently discovered a gas leak in your new house. Um, and luckily you were able to get it repaired really quickly, but it definitely, um, I think brings home your point about allocating resources for future maintenance and how that relates to uh, home buying for sure. So how does that relate to your experiences helping organizations deploy their dam systems? Yeah, it's like with the house, you know, you've kind of got a gamut of kind of home maintenance and repair and improvement that you're you're doing. Like you're you're gonna be cleaning every day, tidying it up, cleaning cleaning the kitchen, and you're gonna be kind of repairing those things that break, and then you're gonna be making improvements over time. It's really the same thing with the dam. Um you've got to have kind of somebody in there who's just making sure everything's tidy and neat so that the thing continues to work well for the users. You have to make sure that there's some ownership and oversight of the dam um, from the very beginning, especially in those critical like first few months after lunch. And then over time, you might find you even need more resources there than you thought you would because maybe it becomes really successful and, and that's great but you're probably gonna to need to throw a bit more uh, manpower at it to make sure it continues to succeed. All right, don't go it alone. What kind of experts, when it comes to dam systems, what kind of expert help might be useful? Yeah, so it's like, if you're getting a house, you know, you're probably gonna get a realtor, you're gonna need a lawyer to help with the closing, you're gonna probably have a home inspector come and check it out before you you know buy it. Some of those things you might take on yourself, but sometimes you're going to work with others. And it's sort of the same thing with a dam. A lot of people, I think, just figure like, I can do this, let's do this. But if you've never had any experience implementing a dam and you kind of don't know what that path forward looks like or what the expectations might be or where you might run into problems, it can be really hard. And if you are doing things like in a custom integration with, with other applications, you might think need people like developers, um, you know, if you're really going to be promoting this widely to if you have a, a lot of users, you're trying to get to to adopt it, you might need like communications folks, maybe within your organization to kind of help socialize it and promote it. Um, or and also, you know, organizations like ours, AVP. So we are experienced in this. We have a lot of expertise in things like 
metadata, taxonomy, um, search and navigation, asset organization management, best practices, and things like that. So we've been down this road before, so we can also help you kind of manage your expectations a little bit and try to get to as much of a painless launch as possible. Well, thanks, Kara. This was really great. It was nice talking to you. Yeah, thanks, Carrie. Appreciate it. 